Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. Earlier this week, I did a review on this clamshell handheld PC called the GBD Win Mini. And in that video, I asked people to leave comments down below to kind of talk about why they were excited about the GBD Win Mini. After all, I had mentioned in the video that it just didn't resonate really well with me and my particular use case. And thankfully, I got a lot of feedback from people who have previously owned a clamshell or are really excited about it. And so because of that, I kind of want to revisit some of the things I mentioned in my review. In hindsight, I think there were some things I probably could have explained better, and I left it in a pinned comment in the review itself, but that also didn't really sit well with me. And so instead of moving on to the next device that I'm reviewing, I thought it'd be worth our time to take a deep dive today to talk about three of those topics that I think I lightly touched upon in the review but probably should have gone deeper. And those topics include the pocketability of the GPD Win Mini, the typing experience, and then also those recessed analog sticks that I mentioned in the review. And I think that even if you were not in the market for a GPD Win Mini, you might enjoy this video because I'm going to go through my reviewing process and some of the things that go through my mind as I'm testing out a device. And so without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, let's start by talking about pocketability. Now, number one, in my review video, I marveled at how small this device is. After all, it is so compact for having a seven inch screen. It's just kind of amazing. And there are many things about a clamshell design that I really appreciate, like the fact that when you close it up, it basically becomes its own case and protects the screen. And so that does make for a very compact and efficient experience. I also talked about the fact that I didn't consider this device to be pocketable, but didn't specifically show the footage for that. Instead, I mentioned that it's a thick experience when you actually try to put it in your pocket and then kind of moved on from there. And in hindsight, I don't think that thick was the correct word. If we look at the overall thickness at its thinnest point, we're looking at little over an inch or 26 millimeters. And given the proportions of the device itself, it doesn't feel overly thick. Even at its thickest point, which is where the shoulders and triggers are, we're still looking at about one and one quarter inch or 32 millimeters. That's still not super thick, at least in my mind. The real rub when it comes to pocketability is the combination of the thickness and the width and the overall height. Because when taken all together, yes, you can fit it in some pockets like my board shorts right here, but to actually walk around with this thing in my pocket just feels like a comic experience. And so I think the better way I could have described it is that yes, it will fit in some pockets, but I still don't consider it to be pocketable. For example, yes, I think you could put it in a hoodie pocket or maybe some cargo shorts or maybe Jenko jeans if you're still wearing them. But I think the overarching point here is that even if I did cram it into my pocket, it's not something that I would be comfortable with walking around. I also think you could probably fit it in some back pockets depending on the size of the jeans that you're wearing. I can even fit them in my cargo shorts. But again, it's not something that I could fathom actually doing in a real life scenario. But of course, this is very subjective. If you wanna throw it in your pocket and take it around, then absolutely. But for me, I think it's more in the portable side than pocketable. By that, I mean I would much rather throw it into a backpack and take it along. And that's one of the benefits of it being a clamshell. I don't have to worry about a case, I can just throw it in and go. So long story short, if you do consider this to be pocketable, I think that is awesome. It's just not really for me. And to be fair, I do not own any handheld PCs that I would consider to be pocketable. For example, I love the compact size of the GPD Win 4, but again, this is just way too big for my pocket. And again, it'll fit in my board shorts, but it's also quite a bit longer than the GPD Win Mini. Not to mention the fact that the screen is exposed right here, and so if I was to take a knock, I would be worried about damaging my screen. Even something like the Ioneo Air 1S, which has the same chipset as the GPD Win Mini, this again, I think is just too big to be considered pocketable. And of course, like I mentioned, this is a very subjective test right here. I also tend to err on the side of being a little bit more conservative, but after owning about 100 plus of these devices, I kind of have my own threshold and these devices don't meet that. So to wrap up, I have one more comparison to do, and that's gonna be the new Nintendo 2DS XL. Now this is a device I would consider to be pocketable. It's a little bit thinner, it's at 0.79 inches or 20 millimeters. But the thing about this one is it's much smaller when it comes to height and width. And I think the combination of those three factors combined do make the 2DS at least pocketable. Now the 2DS is a device I would say is really kind of reaching that max of what I would consider to be pocketable. Same thing with the Retroid Pocket Flip, which unfortunately I don't have on me to actually show, but they are pretty similar in size, although the flip is a little bit thicker and also not as tall. Either way, from a practical standpoint, you can see that devices of around the 2DS size are quite a bit smaller than the Win Mini. In the end, I do think this is a kind of a complex concept in the fact that yes, I marvel at the GPD Win Mini size. It's amazing that we have a device that's this small with this kind of performance. And I love the fact that it's a clamshell because you're also cramming in a seven inch screen and a full keyboard. But for all those things that really amaze me, I also wouldn't consider this to be something that I would throw in a pocket and walk around with. In the end, it's the ultimate portable handheld 
handheld in the fact that we have a nice big screen but it can close up and also is self-protecting. But for me personally, you're just not going to see me walking around with it in my pocket. Next up, I want to talk about the typing experience because this was a bit of a learning moment for me as well. In my review, I mentioned that you wouldn't want to use this as like a mini laptop. It's just too small to be able to use with your fingers, especially if you try to put them on the home row. And in that video, I was trying to demonstrate that this wouldn't work as a laptop replacement or a productivity machine, at least for me. Instead, I mentioned that it would probably be best when it comes to typing in a username or a password or maybe using a hotkey here and there. Now, one of the things I failed to show was how I would actually input the username and password, and that would be with my thumbs. In all honesty, I'm not one of those people that actually had a cell phone that had a slide out keyboard. I thought they were super cool, but they were way too expensive for me at the time. And so looking at the comments of my review video, I learned a new phrase and that is thumb typing. It's an idea I had in my mind, but couldn't really articulate because I hadn't heard that before. And I think that's the perfect expression to use in this use case, because as you're playing, you can just kind of slide your thumbs down and type in what you need and then go back to playing. Again, I don't think that's something you would probably want to do when typing out an email, but who knows, maybe you owned one of those old cell phones back in the day and so you have a lot of muscle memory. One thing I did want to dive a little bit deeper into is the experience of using the controls and then trying to use the keys at the same time. And the main point here is that it's not a super seamless experience in the fact that you can't just move your thumbs down and start typing and then go back up. Instead, for me, at least with my medium sized hands, it requires me to shift my palms all the way down to the bottom so that I can more easily access all the keys that are available on the keyboard. And even then it is a bit of an awkward experience just in the fact that it's kind of hard for me to reach those middle keys. And combining that with a dual key function like pressing the shift button as well just is even more awkward. So even here, when I'm trying to type something as simple as like and subscribe to Retro Game Core, it's actually pretty difficult for me. And this is the overall experience I was trying to describe when I mentioned the fact that it would probably be good for light inputs, but that's about it. Now, I also mentioned in that video that I would rather use something like a GPD Win 4 just because this is a little bit more handheld forward. By that, I mean that it's a handheld gaming PC, but then when you need a keyboard, you can just slide up the screen and then just start typing. And to be fair, the typing experience on this is definitely worse than on the Win Mini. Part of that has to do with the fact that the controls are on the sides of the screen. And as a consequence, the device itself is wider, which means that you'll have to reach even more to actually press those keys, especially those in the middle. So in both of these cases, I do think that these are best suited for quick inputs like a username and password. But between the two, I would rather use the GPD Win Mini. It's just not something that I would specifically be looking forward to when it comes to typing. I also think that this is a nuanced and subjective approach in the fact that yes, this is my own personal experience when I was trying to use this device, but I imagine there are going to be people out there who are going to have a better experience than me. It could be those people who had those slide out keyboards on a cell phone or their previous owners of other clamshell devices like the original GPD Win 2. But for my own personal tastes, I prefer to use these handheld PCs more as a gaming device, specifically with those that use those traditional controls. And so as a result, something like the GPD Win 4 is just a better match for my needs. It has the ergonomics that I would prefer to use most of the time. In truth, when using either of these devices, I probably only use the keyboard about 5% of the time, maybe when I'm doing some initial setup, but after that, I'm mostly going to be using those traditional controls. And so that's how I personally see it when it comes to these devices, but I think it's also super awesome. There are people out there who plan on using this for like an MMO or things like that. Okay, and finally, let's talk about these analog sticks. Now, there's quite a few things I like and dislike about these. I'm kind of torn about the whole experience. And it's been the same way when I've tested other devices that use these sticks, including the GPD Win Max 2. To start, they're pretty small sticks. They are about the size of what you would find on a Nintendo Switch Joy-Con. However, these sticks are recessed into the case by virtue of being a clamshell. And this is something I've mentioned in my other reviews that have the same stick setup, like my two GPD Win Max 2 reviews. Now in my Win Mini review that I did the other day, one of the other things I mentioned was that the lower height of those analog sticks do prevent you from having like a full control like you would expect from a more console-like experience. So if you are transitioning from something like an Xbox or PlayStation controller, or even something that has larger joysticks like a Steam Deck or an ROG Ally, you'll definitely see that difference. Now in my WinMax 2 reviews, I'd also described the controls as being a compromised experience, but I'd really focused on some other elements. Primarily with the WinMax 2, the thing that bothered me the most were the offset analog sticks. As you can see here, the design is asymmetrical, so the left analog stick is outboard, but then the right one is inboard. 
and this is something I found to be less than ideal and really inhibited my gameplay experience. For example, when playing D-pad centric games, it felt a little bit awkward to have my D-pad inboard, but then the buttons outboard. And it was a similar story with analog stick focused games. Having that right analog stick inboard again just felt a little bit awkward. Now, one of the things I praised about the GBD Win Mini is the fact that they actually made them symmetrical. So now both analog sticks are outboard. And I think this is the ideal setup because everything is still very easy to access. However, for me, it still didn't make it a perfect gaming experience. It got a lot closer, but it just wasn't quite there. Instead, the thing that now prevented me from really getting that full experience was that lower height of those analog sticks. And again, it's the exact same experience on the GPD Win 2, but with those additional barriers of the asymmetrical design. Now I've read that on the GPD Win 2, you can add analog stick caps to increase the height and give it more control. And it just so happens that I have those Skull & Co caps, I actually use them on my GPD Win 4. And sure enough, yeah, they fit just fine. It makes sense because these are made for Nintendo Switch. And you can see here, it does give a considerable increase to the overall height. And sure enough, when in actual gameplay, I think it is a much improved experience. It's definitely not perfect, but it is something that I enjoy a little bit more. I guess the way I would describe it, if we were just to use the naked GPD Win Mini caps, it feels like it's something that I wouldn't want to play a first person shooter with. So in that regard, it's not something I would want to play Destiny 2 on. However, with those caps on, it does improve the experience to the point where I would say that I wouldn't mind actually playing Destiny 2 on this device, but I still don't think it's something that I would look forward to playing. Now, one of the main benefits of using these caps on the GPD WinMax 2 is that you can still close the cover without any sort of issue. And unfortunately on the GPD Win Mini, it's not the same experience. You can see that with the caps on, you cannot fully close the case. It's actually very close and I bet there are people out there who wouldn't mind having this extra lip right here. But for me personally, I think in the interest of trying to protect this screen as much as possible, I probably wouldn't leave them on which of course then could present its own problems or opportunities depending on how you look at it. For example, you'll have to find a place to stow these caps when you're not actually gonna be using them. Now, I think ideally what I would prefer to have the most are actual removable caps. For example, the Ionio Kuhn, which is the next handheld PC I'll be reviewing, has removable thumbsticks. So personally, I'd love a solution like this where you can pull them off and maybe there's a compartment within the device itself where you can stow them. So in the end, I wouldn't say these controls are absolutely terrible. In fact, I think the components themselves are really good. However, the shorter height on those analog sticks does prevent me from fully enjoying the device. It's really going to come down to you and whether or not the novelty of playing on something so small and compact but powerful is going to be enough to overcome some of the inherent shortcomings of having a device so small. For me personally, I think that the compact controls on the GPD Win 4 is about as small as I'm willing to comfortably go. And for my use case, that comes with its own shortcomings, like the fact that the GPD Win 4 only has a 6-inch screen compared to the 7 on the Win Mini. And because it's not a clamshell, I do have to carry it around in its own case. And in the end, I don't think there's a wrong answer either way. The GPD Win 4 is a better match for me because I like something that's more handheld gaming focused. And in my opinion, ergonomics and controls are one of the most important, if not the most important thing in a handheld. However, I totally get all of the other advantages that come from the GPD Win Mini. I think it'll be especially good for people who want easy access to a keyboard as well as a larger screen and then also that clamshell form factor. And let's not discount the fact that it's awesome that we even have this choice to begin with. If anything, it makes me more excited to see what's going to come out of the GPD catalog in the years to come. Anyway, that's about it for this video. I hope it shed some light in my review process. Many of these little things will go through my mind as I'm making the review, but sometimes they don't make the final cut. It's always a fun challenge to try to balance all the information I can while also respecting the time of my viewers. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Did this cover some of those lingering questions or are there more things that you'd like to see? As always, thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.